Hey guys, it's Josh. Quick video on Spring for Shell. This just hit in the last day or two. Super proud of our uh, threat intelligence and marketing team for getting this out so quickly. It's a really good technical analysis that I'll note that on in the extra blog that I'll note on the in the YouTube video. But essentially, um, let's jump into it. So Spring for Shell, what is it? It's basically a framework for Apache Tom Tomcat servers. And this is kind of a, a nasty one, and it gets a little bit technical in here, but I think it's good to understand how some of these um, components fit together. I'm a network engineer by heart, so the web components are a little bit um, alien to me, but let's stick with me. Let's walk through this, because I think it's got some interesting telltale signs, very similar to what we saw with log, uh, log for shell, log for j. So it does this, Spring Core makes parameter extraction easy by re request mapping annotation. So really, it's trying to extract information in an Apache Tomcat server. So it allows developers to be able to make requests easier is how I interpret this. And then it goes into key value pairs. And then you basically change that allow you to do request parameters and allows you to be able to store more information. And then it gets into mapping those parameters into a Java object. And I think that's where the jump starts to happen is that there's more information stored in these. And then that allows the attackers to be able to extract multiple layers of information out of this. And what it highlights it down here is enables developers to access the data by requesting properties of that object they built. So they built an object with email and passwords and other things so they can um, access it with the Spring Core tool. And then we start to get into the vulnerability. So yes, it's important to understand the technical details, but I think it's more important to understand how does this vulnerability work? So it enables the attackers to directly access the object. So, and they can access the child property. So if you have license and username and, and password in there, it can extract all those details. And then they can follow the chains of the property so they can um, get other valuable objects potentially in the system. And what's really cool is we actually went through this, our threat team, to make sure that this, this works. And that it's really awesome that we were able to get this out so quickly. Some other things about this that um, how it exploited is, is, is the biggest part of this. So yes, there's the upshot, the high level summary is that there's data inside these Java objects that can potentially be exposed, but what is the real risk for the organization? So you can access the sub properties and then get in the, and then you're basically inside of that web application at that point. And then you can start to run remote code and potentially start a shell, very similar to log4j, log4shell. That's the real problem. Yes, extracting information is bad, but then if they can start to get a shell in there, then they can start to run remote code. And that's where it can get really, really um, nasty is that you can weaponize this to like redirect access log to write a web shell. Um, so that allows you to ac access the different properties. And then you can start to access an actual shell on the Apache Tomcat server, which would be really, really bad. And then when you in manipulate one of the ones that they call it here is the access log valve object, which is what they use in their test. When you that, you can actually inject a web shell into the app. And then that allows you to basically start to move laterally access the mid game is what we call it. So you can start doing scanning and enumer enumeration, start to understand what you want to go after, which X drops really good at detecting as well. So no matter what you're protected from that perspective is I get into your system, I run spring spring for shell and i and I get, I get some hits and then I start to build a web shell and then I start to hit and move laterally. I'm still going to do sin scans, HTTP scans, SIF scans. I need to know what you have and what I want to go after. It's when they run undetected for a long period that can be very bad. So, <clears throat> That's kind of what it is from a very high level. And I probably did just an okay job explaining it, but you get the idea. There is some bad stuff that they can be, get with Spring Core. It's sitting inside Java. You need to make sure and patch those systems, but you also need to understand how you've been exposed to this. And Spring for Shell, we actually have a briefing that just got released. So we have detections of exploit attempts. We've looked at it and there's certain things that are markers in those transactions that we can pop a detection for. We're also gonna do an inventory for all your Apache Tomcat servers. So you know what your risk footprint looks like, what that plane level looks like. So that, hey, here's the things that we need to make sure are patched. And then you can look to see if you have exploit attempts. The key here for XDROP is this requires decryption. Guess what? We're really good at decryption. So if you haven't set up decryption, make sure you get with your XDROP support or account team to set up decryption in your environment so that we can see these spring for shell attempts. We're seeing more and more of these advanced attacks happening that where decryption really, really helps. So if you haven't set that up, get that set up and we can help you support that, including on PFS, TLS 1, 2, and 1, 3 certs. Hope this is helpful, guys. More to follow. Thanks so much.